Google viewers from around the world. I'm Kristen Schwartz, licensed midwife and MC for Gold Learning. And I'm chatting today with Dr. Noel Müller about his upcoming presentation titled Determinants of the Infant Microbiome and Childhood Obesity, Mom Matters. Welcome, Noel. I'm so glad you were able to take some time today to chat with me here. I'm so glad you could make it. Hello. Thanks so much for having me, Kristen. I really appreciate the invitation. And I'm so excited about your title here, about your presentation. And you are speaking about the infant microbiome and childhood obesity, Mom Matters. But before we jump in there, and this is such a really, really uh, hot topic right now, tell us a little bit about yourself, your professional journey, and how you got interested in the topic. Uh, sure. I'd love to share a little bit about uh, my journey to this point. So I'm trained as a nutrition scientist and also as an epidemiologist. And I really come at this question from the perspectives of life course epidemiology and nutrition. And I focus on life course epidemiology because once an adult manifests obesity and other metabolic conditions, it's very difficult to get them to engage in sustained behavioral change and also get them to lose weight. So we started to look earlier in the life course as early as during pregnancy, during in utero development, and also during the first 1,000 days of life to look at factors that are associated with predisposition to developing obesity. And one of the strongest modifiable factors early in life is the microbiome. The microbiome is acquired from the mother at birth and tends to shape the immune and metabolic systems early in life of children. And by shaping the immune and metabolic systems, it may alter the predisposition to different metabolic diseases and immune-mediated diseases in childhood. And in fact, we found this through some of the research that I'll be presenting on today. Interruptions such as C-section delivery and antibiotic use around the perinatal period tend to impact the colonization of the microbiome of the infant. And that impact may be driving the increased risk of different diseases that are associated with C-section delivery and antibiotic use. So to get the training necessary to perform this research, I was first at the University of Minnesota getting my PhD in epidemiology and nutrition, and then moving to Columbia University where I did a postdoctoral fellowship in population health and more basic science nutrition. And most recently, I became faculty member at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health where I've been for about two and a half years and continue to enjoy working with my colleagues here with the uh, dynamic work that everybody is doing here at Johns Hopkins. Thank you uh, for sharing a little bit your journey there. And you brought up a very important point about the early life course of looking at the uh, microbiome so early in, in life, in utero, so to speak, and, and uh, also delivery you know, methods um, at birth, and um, I think it's it's fascinating, and we're learning so much in recent years and months, and it feels like new research is uh, coming up almost daily, and it's hard to keep up with that. Um, so when you conducted your research, are there any findings that really surprised you, without giving too much away, of course, about your presentation? Sure, yeah, I think that it is a, it's good to point out that there has been a plethora of literature that's been coming out of the field of the microbiome. And some of it's still from observational research. So you need to take that with a grain of salt. Um, there are many associations and fewer uh, causal associations. But some of the most intriguing things that are outside of my research a little bit are the, are the um, discoveries that have been made in autism with um, some researchers showing that fecal transplants in, in autistic children may improve some of their symptoms. I think that that's a very intriguing area of research that I hope that continues and gets more research funding. I also think that um, we can point to the recent randomized control trial um, that looked at probiotic supplementation of, of preterm births and found that probiotics early in life prevented the onset of sepsis. And then, of course, there's also the other research from fecal transplants in, in adults, which has found that fecal transplants outperform treatment with antibiotics, um, treatment of C. difficile compared to antibiotics. 
So I think that there's a lot to hang our hats on, but we have a lot of work still to do, um, especially around the area of chronic diseases, in particular obesity, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular diseases. Right. I mean, there's so much opportunity, and you said so much work to be done, and it's absolutely fascinating uh, what we learn almost daily and, and what we will continue to learn, and it opens up absolutely new opportunities, too, how, how we look at things, and uh, from early on as pregnancy and, you know, birth and so on. And it's absolutely amazing, the research that is being done. And I'm looking very much forward to your presentation, The uh, Determinants of the Infant Microbiome and Childhood Obesity and Mom Matters. So um, without giving, again, too much away about your presentation, what is it that you would like our delegates uh, to take away from it? Sure. Uh, thanks for the question. So I think it's important to um, let the delegates kind of know that it's really important for us as human beings to start to appreciate that our health not only depends on our own biology, but now we're understanding that it also relies on the biology of our microbiological bacterial companions. And this relationship between our own selves and our microbes is beginning to be fleshed out over the last 10 to 20 years. And we've really seen to become to realize this interplay between our microbes and ourselves, and that they have a big role in assisting our own um, human health through digestion, also through the production of vitamins and minerals and short-chain fatty acids. And through di these discoveries, we're starting to look at how we might be able to modify these microbes to improve our health. And I think this holds a lot of potential for the future, the development of uh, therapeutic regimens, such as probiotics or prebiotics, and also um, better tracking of our lifestyle through um, different um, potentially um, phones or smart toilets that could track how our microbiome in our guts may change with um, different changes in our diet or drugs over short periods of time. Absolutely fascinating. I liked how you worded that. The relationship between our own selves and our microbes, um, there is certainly a lot to be learned about that. And uh, thank you so much, Noel Muller, for sitting down today and chatting with me here. Um, at this point, and um, we are very excited about the upcoming presentation, Determinants of the Infant Microbiome and Childhood Obesity, Mom Matters. And this presentation is part of the Microbiome in the Perinatal Period Lecture Pack. So for more information on this presentation and other presentations in the lecture pack, we invite you to go to www.goldperinatal.com. Please check it out and you can register for the whole conference and this lecture pack. And thank you again, Noel Miller, for chatting here with me. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Thanks so much, Kristen. I appreciate bye -bye, it. Bye-bye, everyone.